this is a very old map but it shows uh, the boundary or the extent of the what they call the Wisconsin glacial boundary and they give these different names uh, for these different glaciers um, so what this is all part of what is called the Laurentide ice sheet which I've already discussed uh, and the previous one before this was called the Illinois uh, glaciation it was about a hundred thousand years ago this one uh, this Wisconsin glacial boundary uh, its maximum extent is about 18,000 years ago, so relatively recent when we think about uh, uh, geologic and, and, and long physical geography history. Um, so what I've done is essentially superimposed that boundary on our topographic elevation map of Indiana. And you should notice kind of a long, especially right through here, along that boundary, things change. Uh, you know, on the north side of the red line, we've got this brown, higher elevation, kind of smoother, uh, less change. Whereas on this side of uh, the red line, we've got a lot of different colors, a lot of uh, elevation change, a lot of ruggedness, uh, but also lower elevation, more greens uh, on this side. So what's going on there? Well, that's what we're going to figure out. So what I'm going to do is going to kind of put that these suckers in motion here. Um, let's get both of these ice sheets going. Where's the other one? There it is. And then essentially when we think about these continental glaciers, they have these different lobes, which are kind of noted here. We've got the different lobes uh, as they advance, and they kind of overlap each other, and they become even bigger features once they merge, of course. And so what ends up being created from nature's bulldozer, uh, a continental glacier, as it's scouring the earth and bringing everything with it, women, children, uh, houses, granite, whatever it might be in the path, essentially is plucked and pushed to the front of the continental glacier along what we call an end moraine. An end moraine is unsorted deposition. Uh, it's going to contain a lot of gravel at the end of a glacier. What I mean by unsorted is glaciers, it doesn't care. It doesn't care what it is. Uh, it's going to carry, you know, if it's a big, huge boulder, if it's, you know, one ton rock, it's going to carry it. Uh, it is whenever it's going to stop, wherever that ice is going to eventually get to the point where it gets to a, a more uh, uh, southerly location. It's going to eventually start to melt. And it's just going to drop uh, that sediment behind. And so what ends up happening is along a continental uh, uh, glacier boundary, uh, the extent of it, we often have an in moraine, very rugged topography. And you'll note this in Indiana, if you're familiar with Indiana geography, from about Crawfordsville over to Nashville, go ahead and include Martinsville in there, Crawfordsville to Martinsville to Nashville, over to Columbus, over to Shelbyville, and up to Knightstown. That is all part of what is called an in moraine. Maybe you've been to Edinburgh in its outlet mall. Um, so what happens is you go down to Ed Edinburgh to the outlet mall, everything's flat. Then you go to the outlet mall, just beyond the outlet mall is an in moraine. And so essentially you go up and then you go down. Uh, Nashville. If you go to Nashville for the rugged topography to see the leaves change. One of the things, you know, why do people go to Nashville? Because you can see a lot of trees, especially with the, all the hills there. The kind of good landscapes. Well, those hills largely committed, created from a, a multiple in moraines in that particular area. If you're familiar with Martinsville, on your way to Bloomington, uh, you go up and then you go down 37 slash 69, and then you can see the beautiful city of Martinsville, uh, just north of Martinsville on your way to Bloomington. There's the end moraine. So these features you can actually see um, uh, if you're driving around and know the geography of this particular state. Uh, if not, well, there's a good friend New York uh, in its Long Island, which is another example of a long, or sorry, an end moraine. And I'll show a demonstration of this here in a minute. And so same idea here. we got the weight of the glacier pushing it forward, and then it pushes it forward. It scours everything in its place, and it essentially uh, bulldozers everything to the front, creating a rugged feature. And so as that glacier then retreats, it leaves behind this end moraine, this distinctive rugged topography in an otherwise area where, you know, this particular area was not glaciated in front of the end moraine, whereas this area, usually pretty flat, uh, also full of soil and sediment that's been uh, essentially dumped and left behind by <clears throat> this end moraine. And maybe in the future, you'll see me do a demonstration where I use chips, uh, I use cookies, I use all kinds of things to show how an end moraine and other uh, glacial features are formed. So be on the lookout for that. 
So here we have the end moraine. If you notice, our good friend Long Island, kind of at the end of this particular Illinois glaciation. You can kind of see the location of this glacial extent. So let's zoom into Long Island and extend it up to Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard. This is all part of the same end moraine complex. Well, how did the sucker formed? Once again, we go to this uh, kind of cross-section view of a glacier. Uh, so this is a side view. And so essentially this glacier extended all the way down to this particular point, left behind an end moraine, which is today Long Island. And then as it retreated, of course, it melts and it essentially filled in the low-lying areas. And this is the side view of what we saw beforehand, which we have an end moraine. Then we have this little area of water. And then we have the state of Connecticut, also Rhode Island and Massachusetts as well. But Long Island right here, you have that Long Island Sound, and then you have Connecticut. This is the above view, and this is the side view. And so essentially how this was created was from an end moraine, which pushed that sediment uh, to this particular location. And then as it melted, the waters then filled in the low-lying areas and kind of created this situation where now this is an island that's separate from the mainland over here in Connecticut.